how to use the RAA valve for the Rascono operation in children. Today we will demonstrate how to utilize the right atrial appendage valve as an alternative to homograft for RVPA connection in the Rascono procedure. We have previously shown the procedure in older children and adults and this video shows how to do it in small children because it has to be different for preserving growth potential in these patients. Our patient is a five-year-old girl presenting with shortness of breath. Echocardiography uh, shows a thick bicuspid aortic valve with severe valvular and subvalvular stenosis plus severe aortic insufficiency. Key measurements include a uh, 15 mm aortic valve annulus, 11 mm subvalvular area, and 19 mm pulmonary valve annulus. We begin with cannulating the aorta as high as possible and initiating aorto by cable bypass. Then we mark the anterior half cylinder of the ascending aorta from just above the ST junction up to the high aorta near the cross clamp. You will see that this segment will later serve as the native posterior wall for our new RVPA connection preserving growth potential. After transecting the aorta just above the ST junction, we evaluate uh, the severely myxomatous aortic valve. Finding it uh, irreparable, we proceed with the excision of the valve leaflets and uh, then prepare the coronary buttons. The pulmonary artery is then transected for autograft harvest. Given the anticipated need for annular enlargement, we make uh, our RV incision more apically uh, to preserve a portion of muscular RV free wall attached to the autograft annulus. The incision then extends into the septum for complete autograft removal, being careful not to damage the septal branch. While the autograft easily accommodates a 19 mm sizer, the aortic annulus only permits a 13 mm hagar, confirming the need for our cono rustan septal incision, uh, which is performed as you can see here. We carefully suture the autograft to the enlarged annulus, ensuring symmetric valve positioning. The anterior suture line is reinforced with Teflon felt at the septal incision area where only muscular tissue is present. After observing anatomy and water testing to confirm proper leaflet function, we anastomose the left and right coronary buttons to their respective sinuses. Now we turn our attention to harvesting the RAA valve. The detailed technique of preparing the RAA valve from the right atrial appendage is available in another CTSNet video, uh, which you can see here. Briefly, the RAA corners are controlled and retracted by sutures, and the important maneuver of releasing the loose attachments of the appendage to the right ventricle is performed. The appendage borders are marked, leaving the medial wall a few millimeters wider than the lateral wall. The appendage is cut over a cross clamp and removed from its base. To prepare the appendage, the four corner sutures are stretched, the walls lifted sequentially and large muscle bands inside the appendage uh, are excised. We have learned that the medial wall should become thinner to compensate for the greater flexibility of the lateral wall. The distal end is then opened to change it uh, to a tube.
Before positioning our valve, we should construct the posterior RVPA pathway. The crucial point is to use a live native tissue for at least half the circumference of this pathway to preserve the possibility of growth. The aortic wall seems to be a suitable and predictable tissue for this purpose, so the anterior half cylinder of ascending aorta is excised and sutured to the posterior border of the pulmonary artery stamp and then to the septal part of the autograft bed. So the posterior wall of the pathway is uh, constructed. The rest of the RVOT construction is completed similarly to tetralogy of follow repair. First anchoring the posterior annulus, then the lateral commissures, and finally creating the anterior wall with a tailored bovine pericardial patch. When we test the valve with saline injection, observe the perfect leaflet captation. Here you can see the valve from below, uh, looking from the ventricular side, with a perfect, relatively symmetrical closure of the leaflets. The remained part of the bovine patch is sutured to the ventriculotomy incision. But the ventriculotomy closure here requires additional pericardium due to uh, cono enlargement. Finally, for uh, aortic reconstruction, we anastomose the autograft to the remaining posterior aortic wall of the ascending aorta and then complete the anterior closure with a properly sized quadrangular bovine pericardium. Please note that uh, both the PA and aorta have now native tissue posterior walls and bovine patch anterior walls, which provide growth potential for both in the future. Post bypass, all structures demonstrate excellent positioning and function and you can see the reconstructed ascending aorta, the autograft, the pericardial patch of ventriculotomy closure, and the RAA valve covered by bovine patch. This is the echocardiogram after the operation, which confirms proper function of both the autograft and the RAA valve without any stenosis or regurgitation. Here we demonstrated using the RAA valve in Ross and Ross Cono patients. However, it is worth mentioning that the same technique can be applied in any situation without a, a main pulmonary artery, uh, especially in uh, pulmonary atresia patients. Thanks for watching.